Hello, everybody. Thank you for attending the live stream here. I have a really great topic that I think uh, people are really going to enjoy. Uh, we're going to be talking today about attracting clients and focusing on your copywriting and your messaging, and then how to integrate that with your human design type. I see some people are tuning in. Really great to have people here. Uh, if you could, let's get some of uh, the chat going to let me know if you're tuning into live stream right now. Hello, everyone. Hey, Amanda. Hey, Angie. Uh, if you're tuning in, uh, type uh, live or replay for catching us on the replay. <clears throat> so um, uh, there's three main topics that I'll be covering today. Uh, uh, and I have a, some training uh, slides put together to be presenting. You can put your uh, human design type in the chat as well. After the live stream, uh, it'll be about a half an hour today. It goes quick, but um, it, help, it helps to know, you know that your human design type when I'm replying in the, in the comments. So the three topics to cover today are going to be um, human design copywriting, you know, for e each specific type, I'll do a brief overview of your type and then things you probably already know, but to fine tune it a little bit and, um, you know, make it feel more, more like you by design. Uh, and then I'll go into the specifics of uh, balancing your copywriting, your overall message with more of a hopeful, inspirational overall message rather than what I see a lot of times is um, focusing too much on specific challenges and pain points that isn't necessarily speaking to the right person or, you know, your ideal client that you'd want to attract. Uh, third topic will be overall clarity in your messaging. So it's clear for you, it feels like it's alignment and then clear, of course, to your audience and for your client kind of have a smooth uh, process all the way through. I've got some slides I'm going to share here. Great to see everybody uh, tuning in in the chat. And Melissa, great to see you. Kathy, Jan, Sarah, thanks for coming. Okay, can you give me a, a one in the chat if you can see my screen right now and see the slides? Okay, so I'm going to start out with a um, an orientation and uh, a welcome for who this is for. So this is for human design entrepreneurs of looking to grow their business and wanting to attract the the right clients. Who this is not for is if you're not really familiar with human design, which I assume most people here are. Uh, if you're not, it might not make sense to you completely. Also, if you're not looking to attract new clients, this would not be the training for you. Uh, what's in it for you? Uh, learning how to modify, fine tune, the small little adjustments to your copywriting by your design type. I'll go into that. Uh, and developing a clear and concise message to attract the right clients. So why stick around until the end? Uh, if anybody knows me, I'm kind of the resource guy. So I've got some uh, great resources for you that will not only make this a valuable training, but also uh, help you to apply it. You know, you've probably heard the word implementation a lot. I like the word application and apply it. So help you apply these principles and what I'm going to be covering in this training. Uh, I'd also like to help some of you personally, and I'll give some details about that at the end. A little bit about the human design entrepreneurs community and how it got started. Like everything, uh, 
in the human design world, this emphasis on experiment, I wanted it to be like a playground for people to be able to experiment and not have to get it right. I felt really confident that I didn't want it to be a lot of like traditional human design groups um, where there's tends to be coaching on whether who's right or wrong. So it's really not about who's right or wrong. I wanted it to be more collaborative. That in the year and a half since this group and this community got started, I have been just so delighted to see the connections people have made and it kind of taking on a community dynamic. So I'm looking to create more of that. And thank you to everybody who is here on the call and has been a part of that already. Um, personalized guidance as well to supplement the generic coaching industry. There's so much, so many great things that you can get from traditional business coaching. But what I find a lot of times is that it, it brings people to human design or it brings them into it even more so they can integrate all the, you know, what could be generic coaching to do it um, on your own terms, to do it by design the way that feels right for you. Like I said, I started this group about a year and a half ago. I had a lot of help to do this. I certainly could have done it on my own. And the story from three years ago when I first got started that people might relate to this. Um, when I first got started, I didn't actually know what I was doing. I, it's a little bit embarrassing to admit that sometimes, but that's kind of a natural starting point is it started kind of with a, a dream, just a boy and his dream. Uh, I knew that I wanted to do human design. I loved reading charts. I've been doing it for uh, about 10 years. And um, all I really knew was to start a website. And it was a ghost town. Like I thought, I'll just open up for business and then clients will magically come. And, and I thought I was following my strategy and authority by waiting. I go, well, I'll just wait. And uh, supposedly these invitations will just come out of nowhere. Um, so that's what I hope to cover in this train of like the the magical side of human design does come true and come to life when there's the specific structure in place to attract the right clients to you. So that's what we're going to cover. Uh, what I learned from doing years of human design readings was uh, everyone seemed to have like a, uh, a core desire to want to start their own business in some fashion or a deep calling of a gift that they wanted to share with the world. And so I, I just felt called to help people do that as much as possible. So how this particular community can help you is uh, there seem to be these internal motivations that people have. It's just part of uh, the psychology of humanity of why we come together into community in the first place that I've I've found. Um, and it can also play into if you're thinking of the psychology or the subconscious motivators of your um your potential clients that you're working with is like why what why do people uh want to buy things? Why do they want to work with you in the first place? And it starts with that core belief that they know they can do it, but they realize that they can't do it by themselves. It's so not being able to do it by yourself. They're looking to do it faster or more efficiently and having more people to do that can help you uh, be able to delegate, um, talk through it, you know, work through all the kinks, you know, uh, or they're looking to use some sort of proven system. For a while, I was like, what's the proven system here? And, and then I, it dawned on me. I was like, oh, it's human design. And that's ultimately all about you and who you are. And so it's funny how you're the proven system, but it's this... Um, really uh, uh, amazing way to tune into yourself and do it in your own way. So I like to see it as using human design based on what you've already learned, like not throwing the baby out with the bathwater of all the things you've learned from business coaching, but just integrate it into your human design type. Okay, three topics, uh, copywriting styles by human design type. I'll cover each five of the types. Number two, attraction copywriting to attract the right clients. And number three, overall clarity in your message about what you do, who you do it for, and how you do it. Uh, briefly, as quickly as I can, I like to discuss what I call the ethos or the ethics of 
discussing human design because there's lots of varying different opinions, different schools of thought where it came from. So it's not about who's right or wrong. Ultimately, it's a system about you experimenting and following your own internal guidance because it's ultimately an experiment finding what works for you. Uh, I refer to uh, inner authority as being your own leader. And what I see is a, a shift into the new paradigm of mutuality that was the old paradigm was more about uh, looking for other outside leaders, external authority figures and gurus really to follow a predetermined path. You can honor that previous paradigm. It's certainly still relevant. And there's a lot of great things, kind of like traditional business, business coaching that came from that, that can then be integrated and evolved into the new paradigm. So mutuality, you can see it as um, no one's really ahead or behind, nobody's better or worse. It's mutual respect and admiration for each individual person, depending on where they're at at the time. But ultimately, evolution seems to change with the times. So that's what I like to talk about with the ethics of human design. So without further ado, I am going to talk some about the specifics of each type. Starting out with manifestors being about 9% of the population. Manifestors being here to empower and initiate. And how this can play into your copywriting specifically is um, bringing an initiate, initiative, initiatic type of quality to your copywriting of making informative statements. So an example is with a period at the end, it's not initially question-based of the top 10 ways to attract new clients. With a call to action that's informative, join the live event Thursday at 4 p.m. It's a very, it can be a very instructive energy. Down at the bottom here, since we're talking about manifestors for a moment, I've noticed and heard from a number of manifestors uh, the closed and repelling aura. There's certain things from traditional language that can almost automatically turn people off. So I like to offer this as rather than closed and repelling aura, you can think of it as self-contained because it's staying in your own, your own power and your own light, and then resilient as opposed to repelling. Okay, next up is uh, manifesting generators and generators. If I had if I had all day, I would do two separate categories. There are nuanced differences between the two, uh, but for time purposes, uh, if anybody's worked with me before, you know that I tend to talk a lot if I don't stay on track. So uh, there are certainly differences between manifesting generators and generators, but for copy writing purposes, a lot of it is uh not that it's all that you see out there but you see a lot of question based uh hooks and taglines that are designed to be in response to a call and response you put a question out for sacral energy in a mm -hmm or uh 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 fashion of either yes or no let's see type it out um so example for a, a headline to, to lead with a yes or no question. Pretty simple, pretty basic, because the mechanics of sacral responses is about as simple uh, as it gets. So do you want to attract new clients? Call to action, comment yes below, and I'll send you the details. Uh, being real busy and doing lots of work and leading to uh, burnout city is something that I feel like gets categorized into sacral workforce energy. So, I, so the new busy and always building things, certainly that's still part of it, but um, I'm just offering up of more, it's more about dynamism. That's how I see sick world energy and experience it. It's just a very dynamic energy that can do a lots of things at once. And it's very, it's a creative force. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, next is um, projectors. Projectors. Um, I'm a projector, so I, I particularly this is a, I have a soft spot for this for sure, and I, and I really want to any projectors on the call or who are watching this later. Invitations uh, are very important for sure, but I'd say recognition is key. It's all about feeling recognized, being seen for who you are, finding the right people, and then if you heard this term, the energy of an invite, it doesn't necessarily have to be a formal invitation because I fell into that trap for years. 
when I first started um, navigating my type of waiting for some sort of formal invitation. Uh, so before I do the example here, at the bottom, rather than waiting for the invitation, I like to say becoming the invitation, that when you are compelling, you're sharing your wisdom and sharing being the operative word, that's when the invites come naturally. So if there's this question of like, do I wait forever or do I initiate? Uh, I hear a lot of times, like, can I even send private messages or start conversations? Of course. Uh, so the operative word there is sharing, sharing what you're working on, just sharing uh, your message, sharing your message and seeing what invitations come and then you can, and then accepting the invitation or not. Example for projectors is from experience, because it's about sharing your wisdom and what you've learned from personal experience. And those, notice the relation, the relationship dynamic here of it's about, it is about speaking about yourself, but very much the other person too. So it's I and you, I've just discovered the best ways to attract the best ways you can attract new clients. Call to action is invitation, can be invitation based. Comment me below and I'll send you the invite. And uh, reflectors, 1% of the population, are, have a very captivated, what can be considered kind of mis uh, mystique. I think mystique is a good word for reflectors. Like a lot of times, if you just mention reflectors, people's ears peek up and they're like, ooh, uh, cool. Tell me about the reflector dynamic. So um, it just peaks curiosity. Um, so it's about this captivation quality. An example is, um, discover hidden and unique ways to attract new clients. It's almost an implicit kind of question, like, do you want to discover hidden and unique ways to attract new clients? Call to action in a captivating way. Comment me and I'll show you this hidden, unique method. It's kind of a, um, a it's very attraction based, like bringing people into that particular energy. Uh, so rather than being kind of this hidden, unknown mystery to people, uh, I like to think of it more as like an expansive kind of captivation once you have found your community and your, your people. Okay, second topic we're going to cover is, I see the uh, the world of entrepreneurship shifting a lot from this because it and kind of like human design started out being very shocking to people. Uh, it was shocking to get a lot of copyright and messaging that was talking about things that were um, revolving around pain points. But at, at, over time, it's like, okay, this is getting kind of old. I'm tired of hearing about difficult, difficult, painful things all the time. So balancing that and, I, and with copywriting, my, my, my highest recommendation for any kind of copywriting is don't bury uh, your punchline in the middle or the bottom. Uh, it's like the opposite of a joke. It's, it's not, you're not really building it up. You want to go punchline first. Punchline first, do you want to make a bigger impact while sharing your natural abilities? As opposed to leading with pain points first and then kind of drawing people into a conclusion at the end, honestly, with the how quickly people scroll through, th through things, they're going to be engaged right away. They're not necessarily going to read all the way to the bottom most of the time. It's just how it is. So a less effective is starting with the pain point of like, are you feeling down and out? Because this is where like attracts like. And the result is you end up attracting people who kind of just feel down and out. Not that there's any problem with that. So in the second example here, what can be more effective that I'd recommend is starting with, do you have more you want to give the world? Do you want to make a bigger impact? Do you want to share gifts and abilities that people automatically want to say yes to? And then, of course, it can be nuanced with like, okay, it's okay to feel down and out, but there's better ways. So sharing this um, message of hope and inspiration, and the result is get, uh, finding and attracting clients who want to make a bigger impact and are ready to succeed and ready to work with you. All right, topic number three, uh, limit at first. This is a big sticking point I see for people a lot. And this first one here, less effective. Um, bless everybody who has this message because I just I I completely understand and get it. Just you have such an open heart and want to share your message with anybody. And I and, and um, I'm I felt that way too. I was like I'll give I I just want to do human design. I'm so passionate about. It. So anybody who wants a reading, I was open to that. But at a certain point, 
limiting it. Otherwise, it's too general or generic of a message. And I worry that it's not going to attract the right clients to you. Because if you just say, I want to help people, uh, that's a lot of people in the world. Um, and to be their best selves, that's also, I can't say it's self-evident as far as being, being too general, because that's kind of implicit too. It's like a lot of people want to be their best selves and are looking for help with that. So more effective, getting specific on who it is and the, to limit it at first. It might feel limited at first, but I heard this recently and it was like this aha moment for me. It was like the purpose of, of limiting is to expand. So you limit uh, who your demographic is of the clients you want to work with. And um, and then you expand into that audience. So like with human design, you cut, would have to narrow that down first, but then there's just more people than I can imagine that are in, intrigued by human design. And that just seems to be growing. So more effective example would be, uh, this is more along the lines of what I use uh, these days is I guide coaches, educators, and creatives to grow and scale their business using their human design. And it prompts the question, is this you for people to go? Yes, that's exactly what I'm looking for. The result is people who match your ideal client exactly with what you have to offer. So it's, that's where you start to get the alignment of this is who I want to work with. These are the clients I want to work with. This is the offer that I have. And down here at the bottom, it's kind of the big conclusion when you get into the what I call the proverbial wall of sales and marketing is that it doesn't necessarily have to feel that way because that can obviously be stigmatized and you can start to feel pushy. It's only pushy if it's not highly refined because this is the best uh, advice I've ever gotten on, on sales is that you don't have to sell it. And in fact, you can't even sell something to somebody unless they already want to buy it. To recap those three topics that we just went over, uh, we talked about copywriting by design type of each five of the types. Remember to experiment with that. Don't feel like you have to fit into any one category. In fact, when you get um, crafty with it, you can um, start to use different messaging if you're wanting to attract different design types. So if you're a projector and you're wanting to attract more generators, you could use more question-based sacral response types of questioning and marketing. Doesn't mean that each design type has to use uh, a specific type of copywriting. It's just experimental. Second, second topic is punchline first, leading with inspiration, inspire people, give them hope. Don't just make them feel bad about talking about their pain points. It's pain is old, old way of traditional marketing to like almost scare people into buying something as opposed to inspiring them and giving them hope. And it's really based in your heart and love because love is ultimately what attracts people that they just, they feel that it's coming from a place of love. Last uh, topic we covered was the clear and concise message to speak directly to your ideal clients, the limit first, then to expand. Conclusion from that is that clarity and alignment comes from the feeling that comes over time of doing business more as yourself. Experimentally um, and using traditional business principles can feel um, not great at first, but it's kind of like learning any new thing you learn the basics, and then you have freedom to improvise and do it your own way. Like attracts like. What you put out, what you put out comes back to you. So like I said, if you're putting out all pain points and discomforts, those are the type of people that you attract, and they're not necessarily going to be ready to buy or take their lives and their business to the next level in the first place. So you want to speak to their end the end result of where they're wanting to go as opposed to where they feel might feel stuck and lost right now and balancing those together. And lastly, specify exactly who your message and offer is for. It can be coaches, educators, parents. It can You can certainly serve a population outside of that, you know, if, if you don't normally work with parents, but you know, of course, if parents come along, of course, if you can work with them. Okay, so we're getting um, at the half hour for our time here. Uh, comments that have come through, I actually haven't been able to see them with the slides up right now. Uh, but um, I will, after this live stream, I will um, reply to the comments. So any questions that you have, you're welcome to put 
there. Make sure to include your human design type. Uh, you can comment re the word resource in the comments right now. I will send you a copy of these slides I just covered, a uh, copywriting guide by human design. It's a PDF download. And then a really helpful step-by-step -step process to help identify your ideal client. The way that I can help you one-on-one -on -one is through a um, systematic 12-week 90-day roadmap I've put together. You can be added to the wait list because currently I don't have any openings for one-on-one -on -one guidance, but uh, I'll be in touch with you on Messenger in the next couple of days. But you can be first in line if you comment roadmap and I'll be in touch to see if this would be a good opportunity for you. Again, I want to thank everybody for uh, attending, for your participation. If you have any additional comments or questions, please put them in the comments and I'll reply to them afterwards. Uh, I'm going to be doing future free trainings like this. Uh, next one will be Thursday at the same time, so you can join uh, for next week's topic. Uh, so I'm going to stop the screen share here. Okay, so that wraps it up. I hope everybody uh, enjoyed this and have a positive experience and had a lot of um, mind-blowing, profound insights. I would love to hear about what they are. That's what makes this all worth it. That's why I love doing this, is to hear the breakthroughs that people have, um, what they're learning, how it's bringing them closer to their, their own dreams and aspirations and working with the people that they love to work with. That's, that's why I love doing this. So please share those. And um, thank you for being a part of this community, everybody that's uh, that's that's helped me. It uh, makes a big difference. And I hope everybody has a good rest of their day. And I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.